Okay, so first conceptual question. What is an expression in C? And it turns out expressions are really important because actually all this time, except for variable declarations and basic constructs like while and if, all of the work that we have been doing, even calls to printf, has secretly been an expression. An expression in C, in a sense, is the basic way that actual work gets done. So what is an expression? Uh, and the answer is, it is a combination of, let's take a look, variables, so there are a couple of variables, uh, numerical constants and other constants. We'll see that there's other types besides numbers eventually. So there's a few variables and constants. And what ties them all together, what results in work getting done, because of course a variable just contains some data and a constant is just a piece of data. How do we modify the data? How do we process it in some way? Work gets done by applying operators um, to the various things inside of an expression. So what's an expression? An expression is a combination of data, variables, uh, constants, and operators. And I can spot a few operators in this. So here's an operator, the subtraction operator. There is the modulo operator. There is addition. There is the division um, operator. There's multiplication. And in fact, this whole thing here, these two parentheses, they're an operator too, because they provide a way of processing and combining together data. If it weren't for those parentheses, the meaning of this expression would be different. So that counts as an operator. Here's another uh, expression. This expression illustrates that the sequence of operations you perform is dictated by things like um, parentheses, but also things like order of operations. And we use a term for that, instead of order of operations, we refer to the idea of precedence. And we'll talk about precedence more next week. For this week, we'll mostly focus on using brackets in cases where it's ambiguous. And this demonstrates that obviously we evaluate an expression in a certain order and that at every point, as we know in a C program, every single value has a type and that types are significant. Because although it might be clear from the looking at the entire thing at once that I must be trying to work with real numbers because we can see, for example, the constant 5.0 and 0 0.25, when I evaluate an expression, the laws of types dictate what happens at each step. Let's just try stepping through this expression. So we know from order of our basic order of operations knowledge that before we can evaluate this, we have to evaluate what's inside the brackets. Okay, so 6 minus and then we also know that with the typical order of operations, division has to be done before subtraction. And so we ask, what is the value of this? Well, this is 1 over 2, and that looks to me like an int over an int, because the compiler will always treat a numerical constant with no decimal point as an int. So 1 over 2 is int over int, and that means that the result will also be an int. And its value will have to be 0, because there is no int for 1 half. There is no int for 0 0.5. OK, so what is 6 minus 0? Well, this is also an int, which means what I have coming out of this entire thing is an int. And that means I've got 6 minus 0, and I get an int, and it's the value 6. And then I ask, what is 5.0? Now, the compiler will treat this as a double. So whenever you put a decimal point, the compiler gets what you mean, and it makes it a real number. Even if it's 0 0.0, it understands that by using a decimal point, you have, you're telling it that you want real valued results. And so that means that if I do double times int, I get double. And then down here, that means that I get, I'm going to write it as 30.0 to make it more obvious to myself that what I'm working with is a double. Okay, so I've got the first bit of this expression is now done. And then over on the other uh, side here, on the, on the right-hand side, I have to work out, of course, this sub-expression before I can do the subtraction. So it is 3 divided by uh, this whole thing. Well, let's see. So this is an int, but I'll come back to this one later. This is also an int, and I've got int times, okay, that looks like a double. So int times double, OK. Uh, and that means that the result of this is going to be a double. And 20 times 0 0.25, to me, that sounds a lot like the number 5, which is a double. I should write 5.0. So now I've got the integer 1 plus the double 5, which will be 6.0. And up here, I have, as my result type, double. OK, so what is 3, which is an int? Uh, I'll put that up here. 3 divided by, um, just erase that, 3 divided by the double value 6. Well, because I've got int over double, oh, this is going to be ugly, um, 
int, I'll just write it up here, int over double, the result will be a double. So I don't have to worry about that funny integer division problem because one of the two uh, operands was a real value. So in this case, three divided by six would be, I'm just gonna write that out as 0 0.5. So now I've got 30.0 minus 0 0.5, and it is, it is in fact double minus double, so the result will be the double value 29.5. Now this is all review. We should already know this, even going back to week one, that this is the mess that we have to make when we're evaluating expressions. We apply each operator, and what comes out of an operator can not always, but can depend on what goes in. And for the operators we've just seen, so multiplication, subtraction, division, subtraction, division, uh, addition, and multiplication, for all of those operators, what goes out does depend on what goes in. Int times int equals int. Int times double equals double. But there are some operators where what goes out, uh, what comes out is always the same no matter what goes in, because it turns out that C has a massive number of operators. So then the question is, what is an operator? Well, let's go, let's just review. Okay, here's an operator, here's an operator, here's an operator, here's an operator, there's one, there's one, and there's one. Those are all operators. They're all actually related. It turns out there are a lot of operators, and these are all members of the same family. They are the arithmetic operators, and of course, they're the easiest ones to introduce, which is why we got to them first. You might notice a pattern forming, which is that when I perform arithmetic, a typical arithmetic operator takes two operands. We often call this thing a binary operator. Not that we care, that's just a term we use. And a binary operator is something with two operands. But not every operator has to take two operands. You might, in your code, write something like this. Z equals negative A. Well, this is performing an operation, negative a. I'm taking the negation of some value. Um, that's not a binary operator because there aren't two operands. This is what we call a unary operator, an operator that only takes one operand, and it's the uh, unary negation operator. So an operator could take two operands. It could take one. The majority of operators in C do take two operands. Um, there is one operator, a really weird one, that takes three operands. We will cover it because I know you might be curious, but it's not going to otherwise be required. I just cover it because people always demand that I do that. And it's also really fun to use, and I use it all the time. Um, so we'll assume that most of our operators take two operands, and we have to get used to the fact that there are a lot of them. So here's the first family of operators that we've seen. Um, that is the arithmetic operators, and of course, plus, minus, multiplication, division, and modulo. But that's just one small part of the actual... Uh, family of, of the hierarchy of C operators. This, this um, table I've drawn up here isn't even all of them. There are a whole bunch in this category that I didn't even bother writing in because uh, we're not going to cover this part in this course. So um, I on the page that you're watching this video, there is a link to a table of all of the operators that the C language supports. And there are a lot of them. And there's quite a bit of internal um, order about how we use them. And of course, there's the question, if all of these things count as operators, that means I can combine them all together. If they all count as operators, then uh, what is the order of operations? And that's that word precedence from earlier. We're going to talk about that next week. It'll be our last topic before midterm number one. So we've already seen arithmetic operators. And later in the course, we are going to talk about the pointer, well, the types called pointers and arrays. We're not talking about those now. We'll just ignore that for the time being. Um, in the near future, that is, if you scroll down slightly, you will see logical operators. We already saw, had a taste of that. Um, we have all already used the relational operators, which I often call comparison operators, asking questions like, is A less than B? Um, we'll talk about structure types at the very end of the course, probably mid-November, so we'll just ignore those for now. And um, bitwise, we're going to completely ignore. So the bitwise operators involve binary. And you need binary in some cases, but you don't need it in this course. So you might see these at some later point, probably a second year course if you go on to computer engineering, computer science, software engineering, and probably electrical engineering. You may see it in other disciplines as well, but we're not going to cover them in this course. What does that leave? Well, th these operators here are a bit special purpose. We'll see them a couple of times. You may have already had to use a cast at some point. So a cast, you might have seen stuff written like this, int um, f. 
so a cast is a way of explicitly forcing a value to be a particular type. Uh, we'll talk about that, and it'll be, I think, on the, the same page of notes as this video. There's an example of that. It's not the biggest deal. But then there is this. Assignment is an operator. And that's a really big deal because as an operator, we can use an assignment anywhere in an expression we want. We'll notice that it is in fact completely valid to write something very strange like this. And that's, there is a reason we should be a bit worried about that. And it actually gets a bit worse because I could even write something like this. We know that the plus plus operator is a form of assignment. And that's not all. We also know that there are two different plus plus operators. So I could even write something like this. So we need to talk about operators. But before we get to this part, which will likely be the most annoying and challenging of all of the operators that we have to discuss, we should also talk about the various uh, ways that these things interact and maybe go over the relational and logical operators some more. So where are we going with this? Um, the first question is, what is an operator? Well, so we already talked about that whole big family of the various operators that exist, divided up into their groups. We also, I mentioned that our, our typical breakdown is we have the binary operators, A plus B. And let's see if I can figure out which of these are binary operators. All of these are binary operators, but there's also the unary negation operator. That's uh, negative A. Uh, these are all actually unary operators, but we're not going to worry about these right now. These two are binary operators. Uh, all of these are binary operators, and all of these are also binary operators. The, the uh, plus plus and minus minus are unary operators. Some of you are probably, your eyes already drawn to this field down here. Yeah, yeah, there's a section at the bottom of the page about these two. They're weird. And actually, this one in particular is so bizarre that the only reason you would ever use it is to be passive aggressive, to write code or like on an exam or something just to try and screw around. If you want to do that just to try and use up more marking time, you go right ahead, but you better make sure your answer is correct. Um, so we've got unary operators and binary operators. That's one thing. And then we, we should go back to that thing I mentioned in the preview video, which is, okay, we've used operators for stuff like arithmetic. I've written, you know, Z equals A plus B. But if the less than sign is an operator, then we should begin talking about what am I allowed to put inside an if statement. So just to rehash that, when I run an if statement or anywhere else that I need a yes or no question, so if, while, for, what really happens is I evaluate a numerical expression just like anything else. It's true that less than has a special meaning, but it doesn't do anything that special. Its result is an int. Um, and that's unlike a lot of languages. Languages like Java and C++ and Python have a special type just for true and false values. Um, a type might be called something, so in Java you'd call it boolean, in C++ you'd call it bool, and a, a variable of type bool in C++ can only have one of two values, either true or false. That's it. It's not a number. It can only be true or false. And it's a special type reserved for talking about these yes or no questions. But C doesn't have that. In C, when you ask a yes or no question, your answer is an int. And the way that it handles this is by assuming that the integer 0 is false or no, and every other integer is yes or true. And that means that whether we get inside the if or the else clause is just a question of, is this 0? If it's 0, we end up down here. And we also have seen yes or no questions in while loops. And the same thing is true there. When I evaluate the expression inside the brackets, what comes back is just the number. That's it. And if the number is 0, the loop is over, because that means the question came back with the answer no. If the answer comes back with anything other than 0, then the condition was true. And so the loop body executes. And as we know, we then go back up to the top and ask the question again. So in C, the definition of true and false is pretty simple. False is the integer 0. True is literally any other integer value. And that includes negative numbers, strangely. Uh, so 1, 5, negative 999, negative 40 million, whatever. If it's not 0, C considers it to be true. So if you ever try and use uh, an arbitrary int as a yes or no question, any value but 0 is considered to be the answer yes. And that means we can do something like this. So what really goes inside the brackets is any integer expression. So I could write int c equals 1, then I could just say if c. 
And the way we answer this is we evaluate the expression. So what is C? Okay, it's one. And then we try and determine if we go inside the if or the else. Well, what was inside the brackets was one, which is considered true, which means we go here. But even if the value of C was negative 100, then we'd say, how do we evaluate the if statement? Well, let's sub in the value of C, negative 100. We take a look inside the brackets. Is that zero? No, it isn't. It's not zero, which means the condition is true. So we still end up inside the if statement. So we can do things like this. We can, so what's this? Okay, six plus 10. So, well, I mean, this is also int plus int. The result is an int. And we, we expect that because if we're evaluating uh, the if condition, we expect the result to be an int. Um, six plus 10, of course, is 16. Is 16 equal to zero? No, it isn't. And that means we do go inside that if statement. And conversely, we can employ these relational operators like the less than sign in strange contexts, including in numerical expressions. And it's true that early on, you will really have no reason to want to do this because it's easier to use if statements uh, and wrap around your, your arithmetic that way than to directly plug in comparison or relational operators directly into a, a numerical expression like this. But we need to know how to do it. Not really because we care so much about this specific case, but because we have to understand how operators and expressions work inside C. So the next thing we're going to do is begin introducing new classes of operators. We're going to start by revisiting those comparison operators and then move on and talk about the logical operators, which we can use to chain together yes or no questions to ask compound things.